Hello guys, welcome back. In the last video, we were discussing about classification of computers, that is the supercomputers, mainframes, etc. Now let us have a brief discussion on anatomy of computers. So uh, in the first video, we had discussed about the design or the five key components that Charles Babbage, Mr. Charles Babbage had proposed that a computer could have. That is the processing unit, a memory, input device, output device, and uh, so on. Okay, so this central processing unit is actually the most essential part of any computer. This acts as the brain of a computer where all the processing will take place. Now, even the central processing unit is divided into some smaller parts. For example, there is the ALU or the arithmetic and logical unit and there is the CU control unit. So the task of this arithmetic and logic unit is again divided into two smaller chunks that is the arithmetic unit and logical unit. So that arithmetic unit is responsible only to perform the arithmetic calculations, the basic fundamental arithmetic operations that is addition, multiplication, subtraction and division. So these are the few basic fundamental operations that the arithmetic op uh, unit is supposed to be performing. Then we have the logical unit. Logical unit generally performs the logical operations. For example, AND, AND operation, logical AND, logical OR, logical NOT and so on. So this was the arithmetic and logical unit for computation part. Then we have the control unit which is the second part of our CPU. So this control unit basically controls the entire you know, flow of data. It controls the data flow throughout our computer through buses and which data is supposed or which data is dedicated for which part and so on and so forth. So it manages the hardware, entire hardware and the data flow as well as obviously the memory. Next we have this, yeah, memory. Memory is the second most important thing after the CPU because if a computer does not have sufficient memory, then how much ever capable the computer is to perform any kind of operations it will not be able to perform because the instructions that the computer will operate on has to be stored somewhere and that storage space is nothing but the memory. So memory is the storage space where computer stores programs and data. Obviously because if computer is performing some instructions, some operations on some instructions or some programs then it has to store the result somewhere. So that somewhere is our memory. Now again memory is of two types that is the primary memory, secondary memory and to add to it we also have the registers and the cache. Next we have input device, output device. So as the name itself suggests input device is the, are those devices through which we provide input to the computer. For example keyboard, uh, maybe joystick, mouse etc. And output devices are those from which we can obtain output from the computer. For example, video that is the visual display unit or the monitor, the speaker, printer, etc. Next, yeah, IPO cycle. So this IPO cycle is a uh, input process output cycle which goes on from the point that the computer is turned on until it is turned off. Okay, so input process output cycle. What is this cycle? For example, whenever we provide some input to the computer, we either provide it using the mouse or the keyboard generally or maybe the joystick or scanner. But then how will the computer understand that what is the input we are given? Uh, what, is the, uh, compu what is the input that the computer has been given? Because whatever input we give to the computer is in the language that we understand. Okay, so that language is obviously not understandable by the computer because computer is nothing but a machine. So that processing from the human language to the computer language has to be done somewhere and that somewhere is the place where this processing takes place and that is the CPU of the computer or the OS which resides inside the CPU of the computer in some storage space. And then finally we have this output. So whenever we provide some input we get some kind of output. For example, if we give the computer the instruction to print some document file, some doc or some PDF file, then immediately after few seconds, we will get the output through the printer on a page. So that is the output that we are receiving from the computer. So this input process output cycle goes on from the start till the end, I mean, till that point we switch the computer off. 
and this is a cycle which is common to any kind of computer be it our mobile phone be it our pc desktop or be it the mainframes and the supercomputers every computer will take some input will process the input and then give you some definite output next we have registers yes this registers actually appear in the cu and the uh, and the alu these registers are also some storage spaces but these are very limited that means a computer cannot have high amount of uh, i mean large amount of registers embedded into it because although these registers are very high you know high speed storage areas that can hold data but then these are very costly as well so it is not feasible for the manufacturers to embed the computer all over with registers so instead of doing that they have just introduced few registers or maybe multiple reg registers as much as are necessary to store some temporal data for example say there is some operation that has been performed say an addition operation of 3 plus 2 or a plus b so that a plus b will give some output and that output until it is displayed on our screen it will be stored into some buffer and that buffer is nothing but our registers so that value will be held by the register only for a temporary amount of time and not permanently so that is that the use of the register mainly lies in the processing stage of the instruction and next we have the cache the speed of the C yeah why do we need the cache now the thing is the speed of the cpu is very high whereas if we compare the speed of the main memory or our hard disk with uh, respect to the cpu then we will find that there is a huge difference so if there is such a difference of speed then it is very much evident that a uh, inconsistency will rise between the cpu and our memory and hence in order to avoid that inconsistency or to maintain synchronization between the CPU and our memory, main memory of the computer, we need the use of cache. So this cache is actually also a storage space. There are three kinds of cache that is L1 cache, L2 cache and L3 cache. You will again study that later on in computer organization and architecture. But uh, cache is of three types that is L1, L2 and L3. So they have their own definite purpose and this cache is used to decrease the mismatch in the operating speed of cpu and the main memory so again when we come to memory memory is also obviously of two types that i've already discussed the primary memory and secondary memory the primary memory is what we know by the uh, commonly by the name ram that is random access memory and the secondary memory is obviously the hard disk or the ssd so as compared to the ram the size of the secondary memory is obviously larger now why do we need two kind of memory that is primary and secondary we can always have only secondary memory or we can always have one primary memory actually the, uh, there is a need there is a need because the instructions that are currently being operated on or the instructions or those instructions which are currently getting executed by the computer are stored in the primary memory of the computer because if we have a secondary memory which is of the size of 1 TB or 2 TB, it is not always feasible for the CPU to always go and search all over that 1 TB hard disk and find what instruction it needs. So instead, those instructions which are required by the computer or required by the CPU at a particular instance of time, it will just fetch those instructions from the hard disk, place it into the RAM and as and when the computer needs those uh, data or that those instructions it will fetch from the RAM itself that is why we need this primary and secondary memory to be segregated okay so this primary memory is directly accessible by the CPU it is obviously volatile that means as soon as you turn off your computer or switch off your computer all the data in the primary memory will be you know vanished it won't exist anymore and obviously its size is less than the secondary memory on contrast, the secondary memory is permanent in nature and it obviously has a larger storage capacity. Next we have RAM. So uh, we already discussed RAM is the randomly random access memory, then ROM is the read only memory and then we have the PROM that is programmable ROM. This kind of ROM means that the programs which are once written on the ROM will stay in it forever. That means we cannot alter or we cannot change the program change the programs which are stored in the PROM. Next is EP-ROM that is Erasable Programmable ROM. 
that means if you have stored some program into the rom once then the next time if you want to store some other program then you have to completely erase the first one and then rewrite or restore the second second program and then we have another one that is the eap rom that is electrically alterable programmable rom in this case you do not need to completely erase the previous program instead you can just go and alter few sections of your previous program electrically and you can modify it as per your need so these are the few types of rom and here we see various parts of a computer which are very well known to all of us uh, these are the speakers then we have the microphones the floppy disks which are very much vague now we don't see floppy disks anymore this is the keyboard then we have the cd or the dvd drives this is the mouse the visual display unit or the monitor uh, this is the cd or dvd drive writer then we have the system unit that is the cpu we have printer we have flash memory card reader etc 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 so these are few components of a computer so that is all for this video hope you liked it thank you